You're listening to Tim Bolkley's 5-Minute Bible. Who is the audience for Genesis? Marking student essays, I've been time and again brought up against the interesting question of the possible audience of Genesis, or indeed of the whole Torah. At first sight it looks simple. The audience of the Torah are the Bnei Israel, the Israelites. But this identification of the audience as descendants of Jacob is by no means as simple as it sounds. You see, by just about every theory of the origin of the Torah or of Genesis, the work was composed in the period between the life of Moses and the time when Palestine was ruled by the Greek empires. It would be very difficult to put the composition of the Torah earlier than Moses, and very few people have tried to put the composition of Genesis earlier than Moses, and it would be very difficult to put the composition of any of it later than the Greek period. Think of the Dead Sea Scrolls, for example, as evidence against a later date. But through most of this time period, from the life of Moses to the Greek period, the Bnei Israel, the Israelites, were divided. The names given to the division varies a bit. In the monarchic period we talked about Israel and Judah, the northern and southern kingdoms. Later the terminology Jews and Samaritans begins to be introduced. Now it's not clear who exactly the Samaritans were, but we know that in later periods the Samaritans saw themselves as being the descendants of the two Joseph tribes, Ephraim and Manasseh. This opens the question of which of these two feuding groups was the implied audience of Genesis, the audience that the book itself seems to expect. And here the arguments get decidedly complicated. If you look at the whole book as a whole, then the prominence of Joseph must suggest that the Samaritans, the Josephite tribes, were its intended audience for the hero of the story is their ancestor Joseph and yet it's not so simple clearly Rachel is the preferred matriarch in the telling of the story of Jacob and his family but Rachel's children and Leah's as we find in chapter 30 are spread across the political divide Judah Leah's child and Benjamin, Rachel's, formed the Judah group. But Joseph's sons, also Rachel, formed the Israel group, the Samaritan group, and the Israel group along with the rest of Leah's children, not to mention the slave girls. And then there's the prominence in a chapter interspersed into the Joseph story of Judah for the Joseph story begins in chapter 37 and continues on to chapter 50 except that chapter 38 is concerned with Judah and Tamar and Judah's recognition that Tamar was more righteous than he and Judah was the eponymous ancestor of Judah and of course we at least if we're not Samaritans received Genesis through a process of transmission handed down by the Yehudi, the Jews. The book, as far as we are concerned, belonged first to them, before it belongs to us. It's by no means clear that either of these two conflicted groups is the intended audience of Genesis. But if one of them is, whichever it is, part of the message of the book must surely therefore be that this conflict is wrong. Interestingly in the Old Testament the conflict reaches its head at the time of Ezra. I'd love to know how Ezra would read Genesis. Like most of us there must be parts that he would have played down or skipped over because we're all selective in our reading of the Bible. Bye for now.